My name is Konstantin Magnus. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss how to do color posterization in Houdini. So from a source image, we will analyze different methods of changing the color. There's a way to fuse existing colors like so. Then there is another method that uses a grid. So you have, um, well, less and less colors that can be applied. Then the third method would be a clustering. So there's a slider which um, basically reduces the amount of colors, so only the most common colors will appear in your image. And then the fourth method will use these clusters. We can create a little more and take uh, other colors from a different reference image and apply those to our uh, image like you can see here. And we will then create a volume and feed that into a composite. Uh, so if you look at the last step, the image network, you can see that uh, now we actually uh, transferred those colors into a pixel grid. So you get these, this nice look. All right, let's start in a new document. And uh, first of all, we would create a grid. The grid gets a orientation to X, Y. I prefer using unit size and the resolution can be defined by a volume later, but let's just start by with 50 by 50 resolution. And in order to apply images, we should assign UV coordinates first along the Z axis. And now there's an attribute from map node, and this can refer to an image. I will just take some from a uh, internet source. So you can basically copy paste the URL of any quadratic image. It doesn't really matter where you start. And in case you don't like the tint of the backside, you can click on this button in case you experience any dark colors. And I would also suggest to remove any kind of lighting. Now the resolution again can and will be defined up here. Um, it's not terribly important now. Let's increase it a little bit so you can see it better. But technically we will just go through the techniques now. Uh, the simplest method I found would be to um, just use the fuse node, which is usually um, being used to snap points together, which happens when you increase the snap distance, you will see that our mesh gets uh, collapsed like this. But instead of referring to P as our position attribute, we will rather use CD. So you see that now the snapping occurs based on color proximity. And we do not need to fuse those points. We just want the colors to be reduced. So you can see a kind of posterizing effect based on either the average color value or the median. So if it's the median, then um, it looks slightly different than the average. That would be the first method. And um, let's just apply this to a volume to get this into COPS. So the volume can be seen as soon as you activate the initial value. You see we have a low resolution voxel box. Now we can call this capital C and set the rank to vector. So we are able to store R, G and B values. And I will set this plane to be, or this field to be two dimensional along the X, Y plane. And the resolution can be set here. And let's just copy those divisions 
to our grid so that way everything has the same resolution. Now in order to transfer uh, the color of our polygon grid to the volumes, we should use a volume wrangle and this volume wrangle um, will just sample um, or let, let's rather say address point colors. So first we need to find out the point numbers we want to refer to. So an integer index would use the vertical resolution. So this is an integer at i, y multiplied by the total width of voxels, which is another integer called res x for resolution x plus if we are now going through all these rows we will just need basically the voxel number from the left which is integer at i x so this should be uh, the index so i hope it's clear that resolution x is just the number of voxels multiplied by all the rows we have to skip until the actual voxel is addressed from the left side inside this row with ix. Now let's see whether I'm correct. So we will set vector at capital C, which is the name of our voxel field, to the point color of the second input And now we should see at least the red channel. And um, there are ways to colorize or to make the full vector appear in our voxel field. But instead, we will just use a null node, name it out, underscore volume. And this is what we are going to feed into a COP node. So a COP network, which we call image output, will SOP import our out volume null. And as soon as we set the resolution and the planes, we should get a color representation. You can also watch this in the composite view. There we go. And it's possibly a bit more convenient to stay within the 3D view because this is where we're going to implement all the other methods. So let's jump back. And this is just the overall views of the colors. We can all drag a copy of this node and use a grid, which um, is just a matter of switching to the snap method called grid. I don't think we need a grid tolerance. And as soon as you change the spacing here, you should experience a different limitation of the color palette. Now, because this is not so convenient, you would bring in a parameter for that. I will just use a float that ranges um, perhaps between 0 and 10. Mm. There's a threshold. We want to use, hit accept, and now this number can be used as um, a divisor. So 1.0 divided by our channel reference should be working. So we can just copy paste this expression 1.0 divided by the threshold. And now if you play around with the settings, you either get a slightly uh, um, posterized image or you can 
really go all the way down until it looks like in the early computer graphics era. Now the problem with both methods is that these colors, or especially this method, does not really match the input colors. In case you want to be a bit more um, closer to the input, I would suggest to switch over to the third method. So you take the colors and try to cluster them. The cluster node can also be set um, to CD instead of P, but please make sure to not use the cluster node, but rather the cluster points node. So once you apply this, we would set the control attribute to CD. And although we're seeing false colors, you can see that the separation or the color zones, so to speak, have a bit of a different way of being created. You see that it, this is an iterative process, which allows us to control the number of clusters we want. Now, in order to make this work, we should not use colored points, but just points instead. And um, to make sure that we are actually keeping the color values, we should also make sure to copy the point attributes from cluster. Let me explain this. We have two kinds of outputs, if you want. We either we first have the cluster points, which is just the input, but with a cluster attribute added to them. And we also have these average points. And these little points only get their color when you A, disable colored points and keep it at points. And if you activate the copy point attributes, now let's switch the output to both. So we have cluster points and those average points. If you are looking close, you can still see those cluster points. And now I think it's a wise decision to just split the stream and by point groups. And we will just keep the cluster points in this case. So the first output can be fed into an attribute wrangle. And this would set the second input to the second output like this. And now we would just refer to the first point we can find on the other input, which has the identical cluster number. So we should just say PT is the find attrib val, which stands for find attribute value. And you can see here, we can refer to the second input stream using the point class, referring to the cluster. It's a string, so we have to set this on quotes. And we will feed in our own cluster attribute. This would be I at cluster. And we want to refer to the first finding. So this would be a zero. So let's try to memorize this. It's the first input. In the point class, we are looking for the cluster attribute. We feed in our own cluster value. And we want to get the first point that has been found with this cluster. So now we should just set our color to the points, the other inputs points color. So first we set the second input stream to the color attribute using the point number we have identified. So that way we are now referring to the clustered colors. So you can switch the C to see a bit of variation there. Um, you can change the way it is refined. And of course, you can increase or reduce the number of colors. So this is likely to look a bit more pleasant to the eye because it's uh, a different way of um, 
defining these um, color areas. I will bring this into the switch as well. And I find the, the way of um, clustering quite promising. So we will use this for another method, which is using a second input stream of colors, which we can use for indexing colors. So let's all drag and therefore copy the first three nodes and just choose a different image. So this would be the just the reference image. We want to steal the colors from one image and apply them to the other image basically. So this would be uh, a painting and we don't even need that many um, rows and columns. If you want to artificially reduce this even further you can delete the channels and just say rows and columns are just 20 points. So that way we are additionally reducing uh, the amount of colors. And um, now to visualize this a bit better, let's use the add node to remove the polygons and just keep the points like so. And we can use a point VOP to transfer the points based on their color to the position. So that way we are visualizing the RGB color space. Maybe I can increase the size a little bit by setting the points to five. So that way the point size is a bit more visible. That's the RGB space. You can also experiment with other color spaces such as HSV or LAB if you feel like it. This may be even more promising, but for now we're happy with these points. And the idea is to now use these um, clustered points. You can also use the original input um, and try to find the closest match to the existing color palette we get from the other input stream. So let's do this using an attribute wrangle and connect it to the reference image. And now we would just search for the PT near. The function for finding the closest point is called near point to the other input stream. And while you usually would input our current position. In this case, we want to use our color vector. So what it's doing now, it's trying to search from this color, the nearest point in the RGB color space. And the point number it's returning should be the point color we want. So let's just use the point function. From the second input, we want the color based on the nearest point we found. So that way we successfully took over the points from the other image. This would be the fourth method. method. So I think we can just put it into the switch like so. And that way we have a full range of different methods, fusing, grid, clustering, and indexing. So feel free to experiment with this. And thank you for watching.